Big injuries coming out of week five. We talked earlier about Anthony Richardson reportedly out for a month or longer. Daniel Jones, we're going to know more today about the neck injury. They need to do an MRI on that. Justin Jefferson left the loss to the Chiefs in the fourth quarter with a hamstring tweak. We'll find out more about that today. Travis Kelsey's the only one of those four who was injured and returned. He had a weird little ankle thing on the turf at U.S. Bank Stadium. And they say he's okay. He did come back and play. But they play Thursday night against the Denver Broncos. You just wonder, it's one of those, how's it going to feel when you're rolling out of bed the next day when you have this weird little awkward tweak and fall down of course after Aaron Rodgers and what happened with him we're constantly especially older players we're looking for those lower body injuries that could be a problem and that was a problem for him but he still found a way to come back and play how it swells up or doesn't today I think is going to be big yeah it it definitely is you know the the good thing like we always talk about he rolled it inwards right which is is better than the other way where then becomes a high ankle sprain but yeah there's not a lot of a lot of time to recover here for him and and it's concerning because, like, here's, you know, again, you know, I'm sorry about your Vikings losing, but I'm not really sorry. Uh, but the Kansas City Chiefs defense continues to be the star of the show for their football team, in, in my opinion. Here through five weeks, they're, they're damn good. I mean, they're holding down the fort. And I will say, the offense, it just feels like a lot of work for their offense. Nothing is easy. Nothing. You know, you know, again, yesterday, Mahomes magic on third downs. That was one of the big things of the football game, but it's hard for them to create big plays. They don't do that. You don't see nearly as many four play 80 yard drives that we used to see from the Chiefs and stuff like that. I think that's what's concerning to me a little bit about the Kansas City Chiefs and where they are. Because again, we're talking about Super Bowl. Well, we know the Chiefs are good and they're going to be in the playoffs. I get that. But I don't know with the current state of their football team and the way they're playing right now that if I can say they're going to beat some of these top-tier teams in the league because I I think there is a little lack of firepower on the offensive side of the ball right now. They used to be that team that would score 28 points in a quarter, and we don't see that happening. Not at all. It's more plodding. It's more sluggish. It's ultimately effective. It is. And they've won every game except week one at home to the Lions. Right. And a lot of people are going to lose to the Lions this year. But something just seems a little bit off. Now, for the Vikings, a lot of things are off. And they lose another one-score game. This is the flip side of last year when they were flipping the coins and it was coming up heads. They did beat the Panthers, or they would be 0-5 right now. But 1-4, and not good. They have the Bears next week. And then they have a Monday night game against the 49ers. So... Two and five is coming, I think. And once you get to five losses, you have to start thinking, when do we slip into run the table mode if we're ever going to get to where we're trying to be? So, look, the Vikings were making it interesting. And there is one moment I want to discuss. 4.54 left in the game, the throw to Jordan Addison. And they found something in Jordan Addison. Yeah. The throw to the end zone where they initially call pass interference, Legereus Sneed disagrees, removes his helmet. Here's the throw. Kirk Cousins getting killed. He's getting screened away from the ball. They throw pass interference. They pick it up. Now, I don't know whether they ruled it was tipped. Matt Patrick Mahomes is on the sideline doing the, the universal tip gesture. If it's tipped, it's fine. Okay, so watch Snead. Helmet comes off. That is supposed to be a flag. When you remove your helmet to have a confrontation or demonstration, he's telling him to put his helmet back. Or he's saying, what was he doing? What was he doing this here? I mean, they told him to put his helmet back on. They should have flagged him right there. And, you know, we're at a very delicate time now where people think the league is in the tank for the Chiefs and Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. So anything like that is going to give those folks red meat. Now, I still don't know why they picked up the interference. I need to go back and listen and watch to why they picked it up. It was not tipped at the line of scrimmage. But he should have been flagged. Let's see the play again. It would, have been, it would have been post-possession, so the Chiefs would have had it at the 12 right. instead of the 24. Right. But still, it would have been something. They would have started the drive farther away from the end zone. You see him getting screened off and kind of, kind of nudged away from having a chance to get the ball. So, yeah, I'm glad they had a reason to pick it up. up, But that right there should be 15 yards, half the distance, you know, whatever, to the goal line, because that's a personal foul. Taking your helmet off to have that confrontation—that's supposed to be called all the time, all the time. And Jim Nance and Tony Romo were saying they told him to put his helmet back on. That's not. The remedy in a situation like that, the remedy in a situation like that is throw the flag for taking your helmet off in the field of play. Either you have the rule or you don't. If it's not the rule, then take it off the books. Yeah, well, we saw T.J. Watt get called for it after the sack. And it was post-possession. The Steelers still had the ball. Right. And 
Now, where I'll say it's a little different. Let me just give a little nuance here to where I find it a little different. One, this is the one thing that I, I realize a lot of fans don't realize about the NFL. Face guarding is real. You're, you're allowed to face guard in the NFL. You know, you can't face guard and then hit the receiver. That's pass interference. But you're allowed to face guard. So you don't have to play the ball necessarily as long as you're not hitting the wide receiver. Like you can get in his way. And you can put your hand in his yeah. eyes or yeah. put and go right this. Yeah. There's no rule against that in the NFL. That's college football, okay? Yeah. The NFL, that's not the case. The one thing I think he gets away with that there is it's a fourth down, and it was a clear 10 to 12 seconds after the play was over yeah. to where, hey, there are guys that are walking off the field and take their helmet off there, but I, I'm with you there. I think if we're going to call it, you call it there. There's no doubt about that, and I don't know how much that would have really changed the football game either way, but I, I hear what you're saying. Removal of helmet by a player in the field of play or the end zone during a celebration or demonstration or during a confrontation with a game official or any other player. See, it wasn't a was, celebration or let me take no, it off. No, but you didn't hear the end. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. During a confrontation, confrontation with right. a game official, we right. took the helmet off to go talk to the official. Yeah. It's supposed to be a flag. Yeah. We need to take a break or they're going to throw a flag on us. More PFT Live right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.